Today, we welcome artist Judy Lavoy for a special presentation, Clayboard 101, The Ultimate Art Surface. Judy is passionate about art and about sharing her art experiences. She creates award-winning work in watercolor, acrylics, and scratch boards. In over 40 years since her introduction to watercolors, Judy's work is continually featured in juried competitions with many top awards. She holds signature status in several watercolor societies. In recent years, her paintings were selected for Splash 21 and Acrylic Work 7 magazines. Judy's work has earned her membership into the International Society of Scratchboard Artists, and she was handpicked as an ampersand art ambassador when the program began last year. During the presentation, please type any questions you have for Judy in your chat box or ask Judy at the end of her presentation. As we switch over to Judy, please be sure your audio is muted and your video is off. And here's Judy. Thank you very much, Mary Kay. And I'm just gonna take a minute to change the view so that you can see my screen. So hopefully now on your screens, you can all see Clayboard 101. And I thank you very much for joining me today. I honestly never thought that I'd be doing a whole presentation on a blank white art panel. But while I've been using clay board for many years, primarily for watercolors, I started to discover that many other artists were using all kinds of different media on clay board. Clay board is really ideally suited for so many things. So I started to go a little bit beyond just using it for watercolor. And I discovered that its uniqueness needed to be shared with all of you. So let me introduce you to Clayboard. And I'll also show you examples of what Clayboard is, how I've been using it, how other artists are making gorgeous artwork with Clayboard, and also how you can use Clayboard yourself. Ampersand Art is a company just outside of Austin, Texas. And they're the ones who manufacture Clayboard and a lot of other wonderful high quality art products. So basically Clayboard is a smooth, very smooth white clay surface and it's kaolin clay, which has smaller particles than other types of clay. It's actually the type of clay that's used to make porcelain. They spray this clay surface onto a, an eighth of an inch high density hardboard panel that they manufacture specifically for their use. And then they sand it. So that creates the super smooth surface. In between the hardboard panel and the clay surface, they've patented a special seal so that nothing will leach from the wood up into the clay surface. So there'll be no yellowing and discoloration and the artwork will look gorgeous over time. Some of the other features that I love about clay board that are unique to working on this surface is because it's a rigid board, it doesn't warp, doesn't tear, bend or crack. So in comparison to all the work that I've done on watercolor paper, which once you get wet, it starts to warp, you've got to staple it down or tape it down. Clay board just stays stable. I also love that I don't have to frame it with mat or glass or plexiglass. As long as I put a seal and I use generally a, a Krylon UV filtering archival spray, I can just pop my artwork right into a frame. And there's also some options where you don't even need to frame it that I'll be showing you. The clay surface itself, because it's brilliantly white, will reflect reflect light really beautifully. So if you're using transparent media like watercolor, um, transparent acrylics, um, the color will be beautifully true and more luminous than it might be if you compared it to working on papers. 
Clayboard works with all of these different media. In fact, there's even others that I haven't listed here. And for a lot of different techniques that you can see that I've listed. The surface is really unique in that if you're using a water soluble media, you can let it dry and then you can go back and re-wet it and you can lift the color away. So if you're a watercolor artist and you're used to trying to preserve your white areas, either by not painting there or by using frisket, you don't have to worry about that because you can get right back down to that pure white clay surface. Also, clayboard is available in a huge variety of sizes, including standard, what you think of as standard canvas sizes like eight by 10 and 18 by 24, but also some really nice in-between sizes, a lot of squares. You can see I've got five by five here. It's also available not only as the one eighth of an inch thick panel, but in what they call cradled panels. Okay, so these cradled panels, actually you don't even have to worry about framing because they make a beautiful presentation by themselves. Another thing that's pretty neat that Ampersand offers are these two little sizes of clayboard boxes. You can see it up in the right corner. So the top of it is clayboard ready for your artwork and the sides are unfinished wood. Another thing that I wanna introduce you all to are these small sizes of clayboard. They call them clayboard art tiles. It used to be called stamp board, but in the last year they sort of, um, changed the name and are pushing it in another direction. But anyway, it's the exact same material as the bigger clayboard panels. And it goes from one inch square size up to three and a half inch square size. And I'm gonna show you a lot of neat things that you can do for artwork on these. And also with Pam George doing the artist trading cards, you see that one of the sizes that they make standard is that size, the two and a half by three and a half and they sell these in packs of multiple little art tiles. So that particular size comes with five in a package. There is a little bit of adjusting I found with clay board and I just chose watercolor since that's what I do most to illustrate that to you. Lots of times on watercolor on paper, which I'm showing the left of your screen, I like to just take primary colors and I'll spatter my paper with water and I let them mix randomly and it creates beautiful colors that I wouldn't be able to get so pretty if I put them on with a paintbrush. I tried that initially on clay board, same three primary colors and I wet the board first and it looked pretty cool when it was wet as you can see in the picture, but when it dried, it looked horrible. The colors were all muddy looking and there was sediment from one of the shades that I used However, one of the advantages of clay board is since I used watercolor, I could wipe the whole board clean. So I just went to my big laundry sink with a wet sponge and wiped it right down to my whiteboard, started over again. And the painting that I did that you see here, Happy Harley, was done on the exact same board. Um, these kind of adjustments certainly can be overdone because you can see within the body of the alpaca, I did let these primary colors blend randomly before I went ahead and I lifted colors to create my subject. One of the other criticisms, criticisms excuse me, of clayboard is that it's pricey. So I took and did a comparison of what I would have to pay if I did a painting on clayboard in the exact same size as a painting on watercolor paper. You can see on the far left, if I'm using clayboard, I pay for the panel. I allowed a little bit for the spray can of the varnish that I put on it and a gold frame. And you can see my total comes up to $112. Now, if I framed the same size painting in watercolor paper, because it's on paper, it has to go un under a mat to keep it separated from the glass. And then it has to have glass or plexiglass. So I've included all those prices here and you can see I'm up over another $100. If I tried a little bit more, maybe apples to apples, and I did the painting, but then I matted over the edges of the paper, which of course would waste some of my expensive watercolor paper. But just to show you another comparison, I really haven't saved much money. 
So yeah, clayboard, the panel itself initially costs more than a comparable watercolor paper. But if you are going to do fine art and, and mat it and frame it or frame it and sell it, certainly you're going to save in the long run. A little bit about the history of ampersand. Actually, Clayboard what it was its very first product. There was an artist who in the 1970s, Charles Ewing, was using his own handmade clay-coated panels. He had been working on clay-coated papers. That really was all that was available at the time. And being paper, it had all those disadvantages. So he was trying to mount the papers on boards and things like that, and eventually came up with this formula for taking the white clay and adhering it to a piece of masonite, basically. And he worked on those, just made them for himself and worked on them and had wonderful results. And um, actually he has a book that I'll tell you about later where you can see more of his beautiful artwork like I've shown here on the right. About 20 years later, there was someone who Charles knew named Elaine Salazar and she was a graduate student and she had an art history background. And as a project in school, she decided to do a business plan to manufacture and sell the panels that Charles was creating for himself. It just so happened that this business plan won a first prize in a national competition that she entered it into. From that, the birth of Ampersand Art Supply happened with Charles and his wife, Barbara and Elaine joining forces. And Elaine became the president. And actually all these years later, she is still the president and the CEO of Ampersand Art. Shortly after they introduced it successfully, Clayboard, to artists all over the United States, primarily selling through art supply shops, they also invented two variations, scratchboard and aquaboard. I got introduced to Clayboard in the late 1990s when I got this little three inch by five inch sample piece at an art trade show. And it came with some instructions inside. And so I very quickly tried it with watercolors and with black ink. And these three paintings are those that I did way back in the end of the 1990s. Because clayboard has such a very smooth surface, it, um, it is almost like painting on hot press paper. So in the lioness over in the bottom right, in the grass in the background, you can see a little bit of the hard edges um, and the way I lifted some of the grass after I had painted some. When they made some variations on clay board at Ampersand, they used the clay board base. And initially on the left, they made a product that they called the black clay board. Later it was changed, the name was changed to scratch board. Basically, it's the exact same thing as clayboard, except they've added a thin layer of India ink on the top. And you can use scratching techniques with X-Acto knives, uh, steel wool, sandpaper, scalpels, tattoo knives, all kinds of tools and create beautiful artwork. And there's one at the bottom that I did recently on one of those little three inch by five inch panels. So it's beautiful for detail work, which is one of my passions in my artwork. On the right is their panel called Aquaboard. This was originally called Clayboard Textured because when they sprayed that clay onto the masonite, uh, I should say hardboard surface, um, the clay had a texture to it. So instead of sanding it down to the smooth clayboard surface, they left that texture and it sort of resembled a little bit of cold pressed watercolor paper. It reacts a little bit differently to watercolors than the smooth clayboard surface. And I've used all three of these and I am addicted to them. <laughs> anyway, in order to do this presentation, because I learned that we can go way beyond watercolor on clayboard, I gave myself a challenge, a challenge to do nine portraits of my little cat Jethro and use nine different media all on clayboard. So this is a picture of Jethro when I chose him at the animal shelter and I knew that cute little face was gonna be starring in a lot of my artwork in the future. 
So this is the first one. I went to my comfort zone and started with watercolor. And all of these little portraits of Jethro I'm gonna show you are done on the 3.5 inch square clay board art tile. In this case, I used watercolor, transparent watercolor. I chose a red, a blue, and a yellow, the three primary colors. I let them mix randomly now that I figured out how to do that on clay board. And then you can go in and as I said, you can re-wet the paint and you can lift it off. So around the muzzle of the cat, I lifted back down to the white. At the bottom where it looks like a little sheepskin, I actually just wet some Q-tips and rubbed them on the paint and blotted it off. And then I used an X-Acto knife at the very end to do some scratching of the fine details of his whiskers and some of the white in his fur. Now I'm gonna take a little diversion before I show you my second Jethro portrait, because I wanted to tell you that in my website, I do a blog and for almost every new painting that I do, I write an article, I show you my materials, and I show you step-by-step step my techniques as well as describing them. So if any of these Jethro portraits spark your interest and you wanna know more about them, because I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about each one, I would refer you to my website. And on the left is the home page, And you can see in the left, far left column where I have a big arrow, you can click right on some of my blog posts to get to the blog, or you can go up to the top menu and choose blog. On the right side is the example of the portrait we just looked at in watercolor. So I show the colors that I use, the brand of whatever media I've used, and then you can see the reference photo, the way it looked when I just let the colors randomly mix and so forth and so on. So I, I refer you to that for anything that you wanna find more detail about. So number two of Jethro, again, I'm still in my comfort zone and I love to use the product that Ampersand makes called scratch board, but I'm working on clay board. So actually I chose to coat the clay board surface with black India ink. And Ampersand creates another product which they call scratch board inks. And they sell them in a set of six. So it's the three primary colors, a green, sepia, and black. And they actually call the black repair black because one of the reasons people use it is when they're using the black scratch board, if you get scratches someplace by mistake or you wanna make some other correction, and you use that scratch board black repair ink, it actually mimics the exact factory surface of black ink. And so it makes it a little bit forgiving to use um, scratch board. Some people might think there's no way to fix your mistakes. But anyway, I went ahead and I used that on the surface and these black, black repair and all the other colors of scratch board inks are water soluble, you can mix the, the primary colors together, but once they dry, they are permanent. So I used the black surface, I scratched into it with an X-Acto knife primarily, and then I did some painting with the colored scratch board inks, did a little bit more scratching, a little more inking in order to make some three-dimensional effects in his fur and then ended up sealing the whole thing with a satin finish. Portrait number three of Jethro, I did in acrylics. And I generally use acrylics transparently, but in this case, I decided to use them opaquely. Um, I used just four different colors. I took a photograph of Jethro and in Photoshop, I posterized it and made it more of a cartoony type of look. And this one I ended up sealing with a gloss varnish, just as a little variation. This Jethro is done with black Sumi ink, so a lot like Charles Ewing used primarily for his work on clay board. Again, it is water soluble and it dries water resistant. And I started out by mixing the Sumi ink with water to create different values in my palette did the painting of the cat. And then once I had all of my ink down, I went ahead and did some scratching techniques because I just couldn't resist. 
and this one is sealed with a satin finish. This again is the three and a half inch square tile, but lots of times when I do artwork on square format, I like to turn it on the diagonal just for a little bit of a different look. And in this case, because I had more width, I honed in on his eyes, his beautiful yellow eyes. And this one is done in colored pencil. Now for colored pencils and um, some other type of media, clayboard's smooth surface is a little bit more challenging than perhaps if you were using a pastel paper that has a little bit of tooth. So I learned that the best use on clayboard with colored pencils was to choose a brand that is a soft colored lead. And actually the lead in a colored pencil is a mixture of pigment and wax. And some are a lot harder than others. And Prismacolor pencils happen to be one of the softer ones. So that's what I ended up using. Um, I layered them, I um, blended them, light colors on top of dark colors. Um, I lifted some of the color with like a typewriter eraser, an old fashioned typewriter eraser that's a little bit gritty on the end and a kneaded eraser. And I sealed this one with a satin varnish. This one was a lot of fun. Um, I'm getting to the point here where I was going into some of my stash of art materials that I haven't used for years and years. And this one I did in gouache. And I had just a little beginner set of gouache with primary colors. Gouache paints originally were used a lot by illustrators. Uh, they have a really nice opaque finish. They're water soluble. They have a, a matte softness when they dry. Like watercolor, they can be re-wet and lifted or they can be blended and mixed. You can paint darks over lights because they are opaque, um, excuse me, or lights over darks because they are opaque. And because it had the nice soft matte finish, that's how I sealed it with a matte finish spray. This is the only one I did that's not actually a painting, but it's one that people have reacted very positively to. One of the things you can do with the clay board is you can take a photo image and by printing it on laser print paper, not on an inkjet printer, and printing the image in reverse, there's a way that you can lay it back on the clay board that you've coated either with matte medium or gesso. And while it's still wet, press that image right into the surface and you let it dry and you go through a process of peeling off the paper and removing the paper residue. And you end up with a nice hard surface that has your photo image. Now, I've worked in Photoshop as a graphic artist for, I hate to say it, but over 40 years. So this was not actually Jethro taking his own selfie. I do confess that I combined three different photographs together, but I had come across this crazy photo that he gave me and couldn't resist sharing it in this way with you. Number eight in Jethro's portraits I did with graphite. And again, with no tooth on the surface of the clay board, it's um, a little bit of a challenge, perhaps using graphite on clay board as opposed to using it on a paper but I found that it went down beautifully smooth and I didn't really have any difficulty. I worked from hard leads to softer leads. I actually used only four different graphite pencils. I did some blending with the stump. Um, and at the end, I did a few little scratches of his whiskers and some of the little fine white hairs that are against the darker background at the top. And this one I finished just with a fixative that was made for graphite and pastels. And my final Jethro portrait I did in colored markers. I used Tombow brand and they are called brush pens and they're water-based. And they also come, I bought sets of 10 different colors and they come with one that doesn't have any color in it and it's a blending tool. Took a little bit of getting used to as sort of a new medium for me, but I really had fun doing this one. Put in some 
scratch details getting back down to the white surface where I had colored it and sealed this one with satin. So here are my nine lives of Jethro, my nine different medium media, all done on clayboard art tile. Continuing on, I just wanted to share with you some beautiful artwork that other artists are doing. And again, if there's any artists I show you who you'd like to find out more about, see more of their work, some of them have videos, uh, blog posts, there's just so much information online. I made this other page on my blog. It's called Clayboard 101 Resources. And there are hot links to every artist whose work I'm gonna show you here, along with some other interesting links. Uh, Ampersand has done a lot of videos about using their products. Um, and things that I thought would be helpful that I'm not gonna give you the details about right here. So please refer to that if you wanna find out more about any of these talented artists. I start with the Black India ink and the work of Charles Ewing. And um, there's a little image there of the book that he published. It actually has a forward by um, someone who's a very close artist friend of his, Stephen Quiller, who a lot of you watercolor artists will know. Um, they're both Colorado artists and they do a lot of work together. But if you go to Amazon and on that page I just showed you, I have a link to this book on Amazon. You might notice that near the image of the book cover, it allows you to look inside the book. And I clicked on that and you can see an awful lot of the book. And I encourage you to do that because his work is absolutely magnificent. And the book has a lot of step-by-steps. It has some of his work in color and it has work by other artists on Clayboard, as well as, as uh, his own experiments in using Clayboard as a printing surface for lithographic type of prints. Anyway, over on the right-hand side is another artist who uses Black India ink. And if you notice, there's a penny up in the corner of this cat. That shows you the scale of this artwork and the amount of detail that this artist is getting. It's two inches by two inches and it's just amazing. And she really inspired me to work small. And I love the detail that's possible with scratch board or with using black ink on clay board. This artist uses colored India inks on clay board. Beautiful blending of inks in the background and lovely detail with a little bit of scratching on the details of the horse. Many artists said I do use clay board for watercolor. On the left, Ellie Cavanaugh Ashley calls her work modern frescoes related back to the, the clay surfaces that artists worked on in Renaissance times. And she does huge paintings, uh, portraits primarily. Um, this was a, one of a series she did of a girl going through chemotherapy and they're just precious paintings. And on the right is a very different style, also using watercolor on clay board. A couple of other watercolor artists just to show you that there's a lot of variation in techniques and styles possible. This artist, as you can see from the photos on the left, works really big. And she's developed a technique where she's using alcohol and acrylic inks and evidently they resist each other and she's coming up with these fabulous designs by dropping them on top of each other. And then she coats them with a high gloss resin. So they're really magnificent. Most of my art that I've showed you on clay board is very realistic because that happens to be my style, but certainly abstract art is just as important on clay board. Andrea worked for Ampersand Art as a marketing director for many years. And you can see these huge pieces that she's done beautifully with alcohol ink on clay board. It also accepts airbrush. The artist on the left combines airbrush for all that soft fur and then uses colored pencils to go in for the details. And on the right is a British artist. And if you go to his website, he actually does instruction on using airbrush for art. This artist uses acrylics as I've shown you, but she uses high flow acrylics. 
So if you think of acrylics and tubes as sort of the consistency of toothpaste, fluid acrylics, which is what I primarily use, are more like heavy cream. The high flow acrylics are more like milk or water. And they're used a lot for airbrush or you can put them in pens as you would with inks. Um, she uses those and she uses transparent acrylics and airbrush in a combination to create her art in both very realistic style and beautifully done and also abstract art all done on clayboard. Some absolutely gorgeous examples of graphite on clayboard. An artist who uses gouache um, in a playful cartoon-like style, as well as in a very realistic style, working on clayboard. And even oil can be used on clayboard. And if you look at this artist's work, and I think I also posted a link to an ampersand story about suggestions for how to use oils, um, because as I said, the clayboard surface is so absorbent, there are some things that you might do differently than if you were working on a gessoed surface. When this artist decided to explore egg tempera, he actually found that there were very few artists using egg tempera, um, which is mixing egg yolks with pigment. Um, he, over the years, perfected using it and found that the clayboard surface was ideal for his beautiful work. These are a few of my own pieces, um, all of them really small, and I've most recently been working small and I have really enjoyed it. These are all examples of work that I did either on clayboard or on the slightly textured aqua board surface. The iris in the center at the bottom, I wanted to point out because of another nice aspect of clayboard. This one I painted on just the 1 8 inch thick panel and the border that I created went right to the edge of the panel. Ampersand makes the product that I'm showing in the bottom right called the floater frame. And it allows the artwork to be framed without being hidden under the edges of the frame itself. So it's actually floating because it's supported from behind. And that makes it ideal for anything that you want exposed right to the edges. And the, the little fox that I had shown you before I also did in a floater frame. And so the profile view in it being not all in black shows you a little bit better what the floater frame looks like. Ampersand has them available in unfinished wood, in white and in black and in all different sizes. And it's another wonderful product. And then here are some of the black scratch board small pieces that I've been working on lately. And the small pieces look good, not framed at all. I found you can buy a whole variety of different types of little tabletop easels that are very inexpensive, but they look really cute when you frame them up as well. And I'm going to end with showing you some of the really fun little clayboard projects that aren't necessarily fine art but that you might like to try yourself. So in the top left, you see two artist trading cards that I've done. The butterfly was a photo image transfer. And the floral one on the left is actually flowers that I pressed from my garden and then adhered to the clay board. And the clay board surface being so absorbent takes any type of glue. It's a great surface for doing collage. Um, and I also, on the back of some of these little ones that I did in the artist trading card size, put a magnet strip so they can be used as little refrigerator magnets. Um, it's an excellent surface for people who do Zentangle art because it takes those black ink pens so beautifully, as well as shading with pencils. I've made some little jewelry pieces, taking Jethro and doing photo transfer on the little one by one squares to make little earrings. 
And also when we go back to the view where you can see me, I'm wearing that necklace that I made on a little two by two square with my pressed flowers, um, poking a hole through the clay board. You can drill holes and I'll show you how I made this hole in it and use jewelry findings. A little Christmas ornament I did in watercolor, uh, again, on the artist trading card size. And in the bottom right was my first colored marker attempt at Jethro's portrait, which I wasn't real happy with. Um, I liked the second one better, but anyway, it didn't go to waste. I put a cork backing on it and made it into a coaster. And you might notice on the ornament and on the necklace that I also sanded the corners to round them off, which is a nice effect with the clay board if you're not going to put it inside of a frame. You can buy all kinds of little jewelry findings and hooks and accessories to use with your clay board projects. And this machine called a crop -a dial I think probably is mostly sold for people who are doing scrapbooking. Um, it not only punches holes beautifully through the clay board, but it can also set grommets and other fun things. So I'm going to end my presentation now and issue you a challenge. I want you to create something great with clay board. And Jethro and Watson and I, thank you for joining me. And I will close the presentation. Okay, well, Judy, are you ready for a question? I would love questions. So one of the questions is, where can we buy the clay board in Knoxville? That's a very good question. And I love to give a plug to Jerry's Art Rama because they are so supportive of art groups, including the Art Guild. And Jerry's carries a whole line of clay board, a whole line of ampersand products, actually. And if there's anything that they don't have, maybe the clay board box kit, um, they are more than willing to order it for you. They also offer discount coupons to Art Guild members so we can take advantage of that. Um, and I also wanted to mention that those, that little package of the artist trading cards that I showed, it comes in a package of five and suggested retail price is $7.99, so $8. But I bring that up because Jerry so often has discount sales that go on for a couple months at a time where they offer either 40% or 50% off. So that's an excellent way to get these materials at a really good price. So I highly recommend that you check it out at what I consider to be art heaven, Jerry's Artorama. And then another question was about how fragile is the finished surface? If you've used some kind of a water soluble pigment, you definitely want to seal that because if it gets re-wet, even when it's dry, it will dissolve the water, uh, it dissolve the pigment, excuse me. So that's why I seal them with a Krylon spray because I'm interested in archival preservation of my artwork. That's the one I use. You could get a less expensive clear spray. Um, and as I mentioned with the graphite one that I did, if it wasn't sealed somehow, you certainly could smudge the graphite. And so I went ahead and sprayed that one with fixative. So it's fragile to a point. I wouldn't want to perhaps make a little clayboard tile into a keychain ornament because that's something that would be handled a lot. Um, sometimes the corners, if you have a little piece of clayboard or even a big piece of art on clayboard, you might get a little chip on the corners. And if it's going in a frame, it doesn't matter at all. But um, let me go back to my video. Um, but um, you can sand the corners if it's not going to go in a frame, and that helps to take care of that. Oh, that were, that were, there were only the two chat questions. If anybody else has questions they'd like to ask out loud, feel free. I, anybody can unmute themselves. Oh, wait, there was another question. When you sponge off the watercolors, does the clay dissolve at all? 
if it dissolved at all, it was nothing that I could see. When they apply the clay to the hardboard panel, they mix it with some binders. And so it's a very stable surface. Um, also, when I scratch into the clayboard surface, I don't have a real heavy stroke because it doesn't take much to get through a thin layer of watercolor or India ink, but I can scratch many times and I've never found that I'm going through that rather thin layer of clay. And then one other chat, and I think we would all echo this, says, wonderful presentation, Judy. The purple cow on scratch board is awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, were there any other questions from anybody? I I'm, one, I'm wondering, Judy, now that you've challenged yourself to try all these different art materials on the scratch board, which ones do you think you'll try more often? I think I might uh, use colored pencils more often. I enjoyed you doing that one. They were all challenging and you know, it was, it was sort of like preparing Thanksgiving dinner. You know, you, you work for days and days and then you present it and it only takes 10 minutes for everyone to eat it. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the process of trying a lot of different oh. media. And, and I like challenging myself. I just like to say very impressed again, Judy, your mastery of all the different media is just incredible. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate that. And we should mention before everybody signs off that um, Ampersand has provided free samples for all the members of the Art Guild. And uh, Perry or Casey, did you want to tell people where they can get their sample pieces? I absolutely would love to do that. So Art Guild members are invited to pick up their three by five clayboard samples on Thursday, May 13th at the Tugaloo Pavilion between 10 and 12 p.m., 12, 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. And then if you're participating in the Artist Trading Card Exchange, you can pick up, um, for June, you can pick up an ATC Clayboard sample from Pam George's front porch at 301, I don't know how to pronounce it. Calicua, Calicua Drive. <laughs> So there's two different places you can get them. And, and if you forget, I think we ha we'll have the, or we do have the information on the website. And hopefully if we are live and having a meeting in September, anyone who hasn't had a chance to pick up their sample can still pick it up then. And I would love to see anything that you do on Clayboard. I had no idea there were so many different media that you could use to do oh, artwork. I just because I'm not a, two, a 2D person. I was just fascinated by all the variety. Well, I was too. And that's why I decided that that was the obvious topic that I had to talk about because it is really cool. And because our group has such a variety of different artists using so many different media. Well, thank you so much, Judy. If there's no further questions, I guess we will end our call. But Thanks, Judy. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, Judy. Great You're job. welcome. Thank you. Thank you.